Welcome to Cat the Minion YouTube channel. My name is Teresa, but you can call me Cat. I'm doing, this is the first tarot reading I've done in maybe a month. Uh, I had some stuff going on, I had to take a break. Uh, also, wasn't quite sure where I wanted to go with the channel. I don't want to do readings that have to be done on a continual basis, like horoscopes or love readings or anything like that. Um, I originally intended my channel to be for ancestral trauma, but I'm finding what I like to do more is I like to do readings for people to answer their questions, and I like to do readings that are channels from disembodied entities. Um, I'm also considering offering a new reading when I need, I need to change the description box under the infomercial video to open readings back up. But what I'm considering offering is uh, a reading that's like, help me find my shit. Um, if it's simple stuff, I feel like the accuracy is more there. If it's big, important things, I, I feel like I don't always pick up on what people want to hear. Um, or it's it might not be relevant for like a year or two years. So there's there's a little bit of a question there where it wouldn't be like, I can't find my necklace, where did it go? And that kind of question might be easier to, to solve. But the bigger question like, where did this plane crash? it can't be found. That's that's kind of a more vague thing where they get like impressions and scenes and stuff that might not be directly related to what the question is but it usually pans out over a number of years. Um, so that's that's a reading that I'm, I'm considering offering and it mostly it's me tapping into different little vignettes of things happening in 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 people's lives that's related to the question being asked. You know, um, sometimes if someone's looking for just a single object, like their deck of cards, um, I might get like a song or just like a little, like I see a TV, I see a shelf, I see a towel, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm not, I'm not quite sure what I want to do with that yet, but that's that's something that I'm considering. And if anybody's watching this and they want input on that or want to get such a reading, let me know. I'm thinking kind of like a quick six card spread for like 15 bucks for a basic question of where is my physical object, and then for something more more deep that that might not answer your question today but might bring up, you know, a series of scenes and give me a headache for two hours, that would be, you know, 50, 60 bucks and entail more cards and visions and stuff. Um, so the reading that I'm doing right now, I'm, I've got these p cards that came into my head that needed to be used, and I'm doing what does Raphael want to say, and I'm not talking about the painter, we're getting the Archangel Raphael, who is often cited as the Temperance Angel, and the Healing Angel, and the Angel for the Lovers, and blah 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 blah. Okay, now I am working on an Angel Oracle deck. Um, it's in progress, but I've pulled out the Raphael card here that I've started. You can kind of see the lines there. Um, the deck is not by any means in a state of completion. And when I do finish it, I'll have it for sale online. I don't imagine it'll be that cheap because it'll be a one-off printing. Because uh, I can't deal with that shit. So, I'm just going to read the basic information for this card. So we have... And I know that you can't see it because it's a line drawing, but when you get the card, it'll be colored in and probably not lines. Um, there's a long process ahead still. So we have a reading 
a download, a channeled message, a speaking into the headset and repeating the Archangel Raphael. So his card is electrical alignment. So it has to do with healing, the heart center, tenderness, caring, love, resolution, weaving, mending, and sewing. Okay, so it's the idea of fixing, repairing, stitching, joining, those kinds of activities. So try to get him in there a little bit, a little bit. It's probably blurry. I can't tell. Let me get him. See if I can get him focused. Kind of. Is he focused down here? Anyway, so let's see what he wants to say. Okay. Also, I'm doing this on my bed because my table has my super secret project on it and all the canvas scraps and sewing and notions piled up on it from working on my painting. So um, when I do readings for myself, I actually like to do them on my bed. Either I'm like lying down on it and shuffling and hurting my shoulders or I'm kneeling on the floor and doing it this way. Um, with this ridiculous blanket that I knitted. Terrible at knitting. It's my lovely background. Um, also, uh, I'd like to point out that I've had a sale going on. If you go to facebook.com slash tcanyonart, you will see in the notes I've added some uh, a list of art that I have for sale and links to pictures of it. I've got a sale going on on digital portraits. They're 4,000 pixels by 4,000 pixels at 400 dpi. Those are sort of a glorified sketch. I've had them on sale for about a month and a half now. Um, it's a $40 value. Um, you can have your favorite family members or your pets drawn and it'll be like a really worked up sketch and usually the thumbnails kind of look like a photo and then it'll be a large image I can email it to you and then you can have posters made you can have it printed on canvas and whatever you want to do um, it'll be a large file for you to keep um, and I have samples of those if you go to T Kenyon art you can see them on my recent posts on DeviantArt as well I have some of those um, I'm going to end the sale pretty soon. I've been charging 20 bucks. Um, initially I started it at $10 because I thought it was going to be just a sketch and then I ended up wanting them to look better so I put more effort into it and I'm like, well these are going to be $20. And then I'm like, you know what? This is at least a $40 value or more so I'm going to call it a sale. But uh, I changed my process recently so the results are getting better. But... Um, on Friday the 13th of December this month, I'm going to end my sale. You can still get a portrait, $40, or if you want a celebrity portrait, send me a photo and I will draw your celebrity for 50 bucks because, you know, that it just has to be a little bit more accurate and there has to be a little bit more accountability so people know who the hell it is. Um, I think that's about it. Um, I've, I, my... PayPal, Cash App, and Venmo were down for a couple days because I had to deal with some business stuff. Those are all back up. You can donate or um, get readings or portraits there. If you want any of the actual physical items I have, you can look at the notes here. You can go to deviantart.com slash catthedominion and you can look in my gallery and I have a folder called Wares um, with a and you can go into the wares and find out what kind of physical objects you want. And uh, I'm almost done here with my nonsense. Yes, I'm almost done. Okay. I need a thing. Mm. I haven't. I have not done a video in a while. I am disorganized. Ow. Okay. Now I have templates and instructions for making such an item as this. And if you go to my Deviant Art, you can buy prints like this guy right here. Uh, you can buy merchandise like t-shirts, necklaces, mugs, and 
Christmas ornaments especially. They're, they added a whole bunch of new ones, but they're not cheap because they're fancy. Uh, if you want, you can order a chapbook packet. I've been mailing these out instead of Christmas cards this year. Uh, what they've got is a little packet with poems, cards of actual art that I've made, and little cards. I have other art of my coloring books and or my poetry book on it. And if you get a bunch of them, you'll get fancy envelopes. If you get one, you'll get one that I can write on and stick in the mail. So, fancy. Um, so these are things that you can buy. In the meantime, I'm going really hard on my art lately. I've made, worked on my super secret art project, which needs more time. I've got those angel oracle deck. I've got a crystal deck that I started, and that is not going to be an oracle deck. And if I get around to finishing it, you'll see that at some point too. Um, got my painting. And I've been posting progress pictures of that because I got tired of waiting for people to pay attention to me about it for a couple of years. Um, anything else? Merchandise like this necklace at my cafe press. Um, you can email me and tweet me. And let's get into this reading now. See what Raphael wants to say. I'll put that over there. Okay. Very thirsty. I don't know why it's so hot in here. I'm not sure what he wants to say either. I do think it's really important. I was doing um, a reading for myself the other night that had to deal with the energies between me and another person. And I'm going to see if I can get this card out of this deck here. So I shuffled these. Come on. Now, I've used these a, f a reasonable amount of times. These are the Wild Unknown Animal Spirit cards, and I have never gotten the Unicorn card before. And this is relating to this December 12th situation that's happening, and it's the 11th right now, so we got December 11th, 2019, or abbreviated 19, so we've got this countdown, we've got 12, 11, 10, and then we've got the 12, 12 portal, and then we've got Friday the 13th. And if you have that Tris Triskidecaphobia or whatever it's called, too bad. Um, so we got full moon energy, and we've got this unicorn here now. Right off of the bat, we've got a spirit element card. Those are the ones with the little circles with the foil in them. And again, I I, I read the card when I got the deck because I go through it and I read the book and before I start using decks. And I haven't seen it since. Most of these other cards I've got the page number written on them so I can find them if I feel weak and I want to use the book. And I was not using the book the other night and I just you know, downloaded what I thought it meant. And I went back and read it today, and I think it's really important for what's going on right now. So let me get this unicorn. I don't know if that's in focus, because my setup is weird. So I want to read this card, okay? So the side note to this card is the unicorn in the sixth chakra. It's no surprise the subtle essence of the unicorn card resides at the third eye. Okay? The exact place from which the unicorn's horn extends. The center is called the Ajna Chakra or Command Center. The ancient yogis believed it to be responsible for our intellect, intuition, and deepest wisdom. Some say our two eyes see the past and the present while the third eye peers into the future. Now, I also want to mention, too, that um, traditionally... The further back you go, the more associated with Capricorn the unicorn is. Um, and I think that's important. And we've got this moon here with the chakra energy turning um, from the lower chakras up through and really getting into the, the blue and purple of the throat and then the third eye as well. 
And the other part of this says, reconnecting to higher wisdom or divinity. It's difficult to see, hear, or think of a unicorn without immediately questioning if it's real. Did they ever exist? Perhaps long, long ago? The mind answers maybe, or it could be, or no way. This very contemplation explains our relationship with divinity and encapsulates our wavering belief in the unicorn. We wonder what divinity is. We wonder where our intuition comes from and if we can really trust it. We think about a higher power and our mind hesitates between yes, no, and maybe. Is it male or female? Does it have a name? Is it just a feeling? The unicorn card appears and wakes us up to curiosity about the higher self and the divine. It is a card of questioning, exploring, and contemplating the inexplicable. The mind's eye knows there is something beyond our day-to-day -day lives, a deeper dimension to our experiences. The mind's eye reaches and reaches and reaches out to grasp something more. You are the unicorn and you have begun your quest for the answers. All right. Just stop that. Okay. So we've got Raphael, we've got sewing, we've got mending, we've got healing, and we've got opening up to higher intuition and dimensional stuff. All right, so um, I'm not going to pull that Raphael card into the screen and leave it because that. It's not even supposed to be seen or used yet, technically. So prop that up there with the yarn and my lotus that I made. Okay, it's craft foam. Ah, where am I? Okay. So, oh, I also want to point out, I'm using the Syrian Star Seed Tarot, and these cards are friggin' huge, and. Now that I've used them a fair amount, they're getting beat up enough that they're, they're easier to shuffle. But I found I can't really shuffle them that well, and I've got this method now that actually kind of works. Yeah. Oh, yes. I did already clear and shuffle these decks, but it's so gratifying to actually be able to shuffle these ginormous cards and feel like I know what I'm doing. And it's only taken me six months. So yay. All of my other larger cards are just small enough that I can still shuffle them this way. These ones are too big. Maybe if Shaquille of the O'Neills were shuffling them, he could get them normally because he's a very tall person. And I am not that. Okay, one more. Oh! Yes. Okay. says, what, what do you want to say, Raphael, you glorious ginger bitch, what would you like to say? Now, typically my home court angel is Michael, but he's been busy with other people and stuff lately and Gabriel was all up in there for a minute, but I've been kind of left with Raphael hanging out in the corner over here for a few weeks. I had I had a couple people haunting me. I had, George Michael was haunting me for like a month and I thought I was gonna have to do a channel and then it finally stopped and then there was somebody else for a couple weeks and now I don't remember who it was. So weird. Okay. Okay. Getting faith, the faith, the faith stuck in my head, but I actually like Father Figure better, that song that kicks ass. And the album came out in 1987 and it's still, except for like one song, sounds pretty current. So I'll figure that out. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Okay. And the bottom of the deck. 
All right. Uh, of course, the shadow. All right. So this is the devil card in this deck. So we're obviously going into the full moon. We have to deal with the shadow self. We have 15 here, so we have change, change, change. Um, ooh, ooh, there's a song. I need to find out what that song is. Hold on. Change by Churchill. Go listen to that song. Okay, so we have five and then we have it three times. So we have, um, it's like a ratchet. Did you ever see that, um, oh, what the fuck is it called? The crop circle that's got pie in it and it's like circles and then it's like ratcheted. Uh, so it goes, um, it's divided into like eight sections and then it ratchets three sections and then it goes in and then it comes one section and then it ratchets in and then it goes four and then it go continues. Um, that's how I feel like this. So it's ratcheting three change, ratcheting three change, ratcheting three change. And then we can see that even here we have this division, like this spider web is divided like that crop circle. So we go three and then jink and then three and then three. So it's uh, quick leveling up. You've got to change quickly. You've got to get through your shit. Um, you've got to uncover what's blocking you. Um, so here not only is it nighttime, but it's cobwebby. It's dark and we have two figures here. Um, so it, I would say also that um, you're dealing with people in the physical world and your reactions to them and that has to do with your shadow work. It has to do with your connection to other people and again that has to do with mending. So we have weaving, we have this web, um, healing how you respond to other people in order to get through your shadows within. So it's like um, how you relate to other people isn't always the reality of what's going on in the situation. Um, you might be triggered by them to behave in a way that isn't relevant to the situation. Okay, you can call it PTSD, you can call it whatever you want. Um, and the only way it's really going to change is if you, if you get in there and recognize it for what it is and then realize that you're, you're really just playing a role and the way to heal it is to say, oh, okay, um, this is what I was practicing, but this energy isn't really where I want to be right now. I don't feel like it's part of who I am at this point. I feel like I'm moving beyond it. I need to change how I view it. And I shift, I go ratchet in, shift, change, go in a different direction. And then you level up and you deal with the same, it's, it's like the same energy, but on a different scale. Okay, so we have the people down here, they're small, and then their shadow is bigger, and then you go even bigger, and the sphinx is much bigger than them. And we see that it, the spider web is centered on its throat chakra, so you're dealing with perceptions and communications, um, and then he's looking up. So it's, it's all in a manner of quickly ratcheting up energies and really getting into this... Uh, calm before the storm, this dark, darkest before the dawn. And it's not actually a dawn, though. It's the full moon. It's reflecting the light. Um, and it, it's really saying that uh, you have to be comfortable with the darkness and illuminate it from within. You can't always say, oh, I want to be in the light and, and take Prozac and pretend that you're fine. That's not healing. That's fucking around. Okay? So... The darkest night is just before dawn, and that's when we get this intuition, this opening up of the third eye is when we work through that darkness instead of avoiding it. Was I even on the, is that on the, yeah, that's on there, okay. I feel like I'm talking like I'm really out of breath, and I'm extremely excitable considering how tired I am. 
I think it's because I haven't done a reading in a while. Okay, so this one after. Okay, so we have the Eight of Orbs. So that's swords in this deck. Inverted. We have the Ten of Chalices. Inverted. So already we have 18, which is the moon. And this is cups in this deck. And then we have the Great Wheel inverted. So that's 10. So we have two completions already. We have 20, which is judgment also, um, which is karma in this deck. And what's this card here? Okay, so we have 30. So again, like I said, it's ratcheting. Three ratchet, three ratchet, three ratchet to get 15. But here it's gone up we're multiplying already. We've got, instead of five, 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 we get 10, 10, 10. We're moving and we're finishing. We're completing. We're dealing with these karmic cycles. Okay. So in, in, we're not stalling movement. We're staying in the dark until we move through this stuff. Okay. You're no longer going to bite yourself in your own ass. Okay. Now this eight here, this has to do with I'm stuck in a prison of my own making. Turn it upside down. We've got this reflecting light coming down here. It's washing out our crusty feelings, and now we're letting go. We're getting out. Was I holding that up to the camera? Maybe? Okay. I feel like that was really fast. 38. 11. So that's timing. Okay. Okay. So we'll get. Uh, this one? Just that one? Okay, so here we have bats. So we have sonar, we have seeing in the dark, we have the full moon here. This is an air element, so we're dealing with perception, with truth. But look at this. He's down here in this red and orange, so he's down into the lower chakras. Now, if you're eating into your kundalini energy like this, where you're eating your own tail, you kind of have to go back to the base. What is the root of your problem? What is causing your sphincter to clench whenever you think about trying to... Uh, work through your darkness. What are you afraid of? What are you not seeing? Okay. Learn to see in the dark so that you're not afraid of it and then you'll be able to illuminate it from within the darkness instead of hiding in the light. So right here we see already this is the dark side of the yin yang and this is the light in the dark. Okay, we're not running away from it. We're not escaping it. We're working into the darkness so that we know it so that we can start to have our own inner guidance system. Okay. Let me move that out for a minute. What else? No? Okay. We got a couple of these. I love this mini Rider weight deck. It's so goddamn cute. So teensy. Seven of wands. The sun in reverse. Strength in reverse. Okay, so here's the 15 again. So here's the seven of wands. So we're dealing, and then here we have fire which is in Leo. And here we also have fire in Leo. All right. So our strength does not lie in running into the sunshine again. You see this orange here that's similar to this here. It's like the wings of the bat. The wings on the bus go round and round. Okay, so here you're clearing all this shit in your lower chakras. That's where all this shadow is. You have to go deep into yourself in, like, a um, visual way. How much time have I got? Oh, I've got time. Okay. Um, and again, so we got seven, and then strength is eight. Now, even though this is in reverse, 
I also see uh, the the magician has the infinity on on his head too, so it's like you're not going to escape this by magic. So it'd be a negative one, the invert of the magician. So you can't get through this by waving a magic wand and trying to make it okay. You have to go where the sun is not. You have to go into the dark and you're only allowed this reflection. You can't walk into the daylight and pretend like you're fine. You have to clear the way. You have to... It is, you're not defending your perceptions. You're knocking them down. You're clearing the way for this new beginning. It's, um, especially with this hoop here, like as a portal, it's like uh, giving birth. Your, oh, what would that be called? Seven months gestation. Mm. Technically, it's ten moons, okay? So 19, the sun, 9 one is 10. So that's 10 moons would give birth to your new self. And we had 10 here, and 10, and 10, and then we had 15 here as well. So it's, it's sort of a related idea, but um, like womb and tomb, you have to go through this... Uh, almost like a dark night of the soul, a, a synthetic death to deal with the shadow elements till you're comfortable. So we're, we're not um, going to get through this ascension by force of magic. You have to do this work where you have to fight for it in, in a way. You have to clear out your lower chakras in order to ascend. Now, even though these are very bright, we have this, all this orange and yellow, the solar plexus, what are you holding on to in your gut? And that's that's really where all this is going to be. Uh, if, if you're familiar with the term engram, it's a, a memory that's locked into your cells. It's where your diseases come from. <sighs> So, I don't feel like I'm done with that yet. I want to I'm gonna get a couple of these. This is my bootleg music deck. Um, I have a PDF that you can print out yourself if you want it. Uh, just message me. You're gonna need 10 pages of cardstock. I haven't used it in a while, but I uh, was. Listening to the playlist that I made with all these songs on, I put it on random in that way when I'm, I can do other stuff and give myself a reading just by letting the playlist go random and pick the songs that are on these cards. It's handy. Oh no, you didn't. Okay. So now we have the Eight of Wands in reverse. So that's coming back to this and giving that 15 again with this idea of negative one, but now it's in the wands element as well. It's almost like saying we're code switching from our thoughts to our inspiration. What are, what are, what is, what are we not telling ourselves? Now here we have six swords. Now this would be balance if they were together. And here we're saying, I'm, I'm repeating myself over and over again. We have this idea of ascension in a way of we're doing it on one level and then we're doing it on another. So we have the same figures, but they're nested. And here in this Six of Swords, I have Bohemian Rhapsody and we have this nested thing of Freddy. Now usually it's going this way, but I see it as going this way. So we're working through all this darkness, ramping up, we're ratcheting up for each of the f number five for change. And then we get into our own light here in this darkness. Okay. Um, oh, this song is bringing on home to me for Eight of Wands. Anyway, um, so what else have I got? So it goes this way. So we have the Four of Cups inverted. Play something sweet, aka Brickyard Blues. So here I've got this fake piano made out of bricks. 
as a photo and it's inverted. So the Four of Cups is usually that guy sitting under a tree and he doesn't like what he's being offered. So here it's it's like um You've built your foundation out of these false emotional impressions that you've been holding in your body. So we go four, eight here. Now, the four of wands is usually the foundation card, but here you've built up this brick shit house out of things that you don't like, things, and you've trapped yourself. But here you're releasing because you're learning to see in the dark. Okay, so here we had the Ten of Flames. You're giving up this burden of holding on to all this crap. You're walking up these stairs into this darkness, but you don't need all these torches anymore. Um, so, so this is your foundation of your life is based on emotions, but you're not looking... You're not telling yourself the truth. You're not giving yourself this perspective. So not only do we have these uh, fives ramping up, but we have these fours as well. Four, eight. And then we have an eight here as well. And what is eight by eight but the tower? So it's an overhaul. And then we also have a completion of four and six here, which is another 10 as well. So we got 40 and 40 weeks gives birth to that new, um, the new, the new you, as it were. All right, so we have the fool here inverted. So this is what I'm talking about. The fool is the baby, but we're not, we're not there yet. So here, this is wake me up. And the, the picture here is of Tim Bergling, AKA Avicii. And they just did that. Um, that tribute concert for mental health. Now, I'm not going to say w what it was with him, but I feel like he wasn't able to complete the shadow work. But usually this card for me is positive. There's a light in the dark, but it's not happening yet because we're not into this portal on the 12th yet. It's a marker to say um, we're holding out for this new beginning, just for a minute. This other card here, the Three of Pentacles. So this is Overload. Normally this is working together, um, or using the plans to make a new foundation it has to do with something that's going on in the physical world. But here we've got this Four of Cups, we've got this Three of Pentacles, and we've got this Seven here. So we're, we're, we're changing the plans. We're changing number five, the plans, three, four, five, change. So you got three, four, seven. We're working to clear this stuff out because our, what we thought was the right way to build stuff using our emotions to build our life in the 3D world isn't working because we haven't cleared out all our shit from the lower chakras. Uh, another Aminol card here. Mm. What is that one? Fox. Okay, now I got this card the other night. I see this fox as being equivalent to the Seven of Swords, and in part because the Seven of Swords in the matching tarot deck has a little crafty fox on it. But I, I just see it as, um, so we have an earth sign here, and he's he's in this yellow and orange. Again, the sacral and the solar plexus, and he's got all these little bits of darkness coming in, and his eyes are like, ooh, what's over there? Maybe I can sneak in there and steal a chicken or something. But I also want to check the book because I don't feel like it's only just being sneaky. It's not like, oh, I'm going to run over here and pretend like I don't have to sort this out. Fox. Okay. And he did come out upside down. 
So in this out of balance energy of being upside down, it's sneaky, unsure of identity. Now, when you get through this work, you can turn it around and you'll be magical, ingenious teacher, monogamous. Um, so it's just sort of wise and strong and, and just sort of all around a swell guy. So it's kind of like a junior version of this. You know how a fox is kind of like a cat dog? It's like a faithful woodland cat thing that carries that orange energy. But when he's not balanced out, he's, he's a little shifty. So this is your foundation is shifty in your shit house. Okay. So let me, I think I'm done with this deck. Let me get one more card from the middle. That wasn't the right one. These. Uh, okay. That one too. That one. Okay. So here we have, get this on here. So we have the 10 of pentacles inverted. Now again, with an inverted 10, so instead of just alluding to this other 10 weeks to make up the 40, you have very much so right here. So we have cups, flames, pentacles, and then the major arcana. So the only thing that's really missing is the Ten of Swords to make up like the whole set. Um, but here it's it's just this idea of you're not going to get this completion in the physical world without doing this work, this labor, this rebuilding. It's saying change, change, five, five. And again, the King of Cups comes out inverted because we're not even doing the Four of Cups, right? It's it's um it's a ramping up, right? So what is so we have the ten here, and then we have four, so we have imbalance in the emotions because we need to do the work. Queen of Swords inverted. So there's a lot of bitterness that has to be worked through as well. You've hung on to your feelings for a long time you've grown accustomed to them and you're you might be thinking well why do I have to do all the changing what's in it for me and it's just a way of being bitter about not really telling yourself the truth at least in that energy and then we have the seven of pentacles inverted again it's it's you're hung up on what you thought you should have by now. We have this imbalance here as well, seven and seven. Okay, the, you're, you've got a bitter harvest here. And this is uh, 13 and seven is 20. So again, that goes back to this idea of clearing out karma, um, finding what's going on with the judgment, cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. And then we have death here, just as if to say death cycle. And just here it's inverted because it's it's not like, it's more of a transformation than a death. You're not, it, it, it's, you won't have to deal with a direct ego hit if you actually work through things and from the, from the bottom up it's a restructuring it's really transformation it's it's dissolving in order to reconstitute and then here we have the five of wands as well because you have to so we have five and seven here so this is 12 wands this alludes to the hanged man 
but instead of waiting around for this divine inspiration to come, you're going to hang upside down like a bat and go deep into yourself with this red and orange energy to clean out what you've been clinging to that's caused you to constantly defend your position against other people instead of working through it and say, well, why do I attack people when they do this to me? It's, well, it's because I, I said what I said. Well, maybe, maybe you should think about it a little bit more. That's that kind of energy. Okay. Okay, I guess I want another one of these. That was fast. He is tossing these cards freaking everywhere. I think that's the last one of these as well. Okay, so we have Otter Spirit inverted. Now, now see, we have this idea. He's going down. He's swimming down into this emotional field. You can see this idea of there's going to be a light in the dark, but he's a water elemental, but he's like dried out. He's run aground. He's got no air. He's going under. And you can see he's descending through this blue and green into the yellow um, chakra system to to really get in. He, he's like a... He looks like a periscope, but inverted. He's like, let's see what's down underneath here. Let's, let's uh, drop a probe and see what's going on. So I just want to read Skim in the book a little bit too. Since I have it sitting out here. Okay. Now, here it's full of love and you're not really needing anything. Which makes sense because I know there's another animal spirit deck with Otter where they're like real lovey in the card. But I don't have that deck. But here, when it's out of balance, it's says gloomy sighs and makes silly excuses. So here is this idea of you're not really willing to go all the way down into it. So he's stopping at this sort of yellow green energy instead of going all the way down into this red where the conflict really lies. And even this triangle upside down is like a V and then we have the V for the five here. So it's this conflict of of really just saying, I don't really want to do all this work. Well, well, my little baby biatch, you have to. You've got to get into that darkness. So what's the bottom of this deck? Starfish. So this has to do with being shallow. I remember this now. Look at this. Okay, so we're not really willing to go deep, but we've got the five here for change, five points. And then we've got this yellow-orange energy getting deeper into those chakras. And now we're in our emotions. It's water element. We're all wet. Let me just get in here for a second. Ninety-seven. I like how I read the number backwards. Genius. All that glitters is not gold, okay? Now, if you clear out your stuff, you'll be able to express artistically, you can be uplifting, you can use this energy in a sunny way, but you have to get through the darkness first of, and you can't do it in the shallows. Okay, okay I'm gonna get a work your light oracle card first, apparently. I don't got time. Restart. Wow, okay. This one and then this one here. Okay. Alright. So here we have Council of Light, Divine Orchestration, Helpers in the Subtle Realms. So here Raphael is just saying, like, all of us here are up in here helping you. You're not really doing it alone, but you still have to do the work. Got transformation. 
So again, like I said, where the hell did I put it? This isn't really death, ego death necessarily. It's transformation. It has to do with the 2020, 2020, 20, literally going into 2020 um, transformation. Things are changing at a cellular level, deep healing, right? So I, like I said, you can't do it in the shallows and it has to do with healing, which again, Raphael's wheelhouse, we have the DNA here, we have the sunlight, but we're still, it's behind us. The sun isn't rising yet. This is really a reflection. It's this moon energy lighting up right here. And there's this glow on the third eye. Now, um, uh, what the fuck was I going to say? I mean, there's this cat energy, like, from the strength card, but that's not really the point. Um, oh, I lost the thought. I was doing so well. Oh, on a cellular level. Okay, when I said engrams, that is when your emotional foundation is in your physical body. That's why we had the Four of Cups and the Three of Pentacles together. So we have this emotional foundation of dissatisfaction in the the plans because three is like um the plans of a cathedral like the floor plan the layout the architecture of the physical body is overloaded by this emotional dissatisfaction and what that really is is that the the dna in your cell stores your toxic memories until you go in and reprogram it. So that's what that transformation actually is. And you can do that with memories. You don't have to say, oh, I have to forgive people. You can actually go in and play your memories over again and then like overwrite them with a different scenario in your head that will change the memory. It will heal yourself. Um, and if you don't know what that is, I suggest looking it up. There's a couple of, vid of music videos where someone will go back um, there's like three different women that I've seen do it. They'll go back to a scene of when they were a kid, but they're with themselves as an adult in the scene with them as a child. So basically what you're doing is you're going back in and you're rewriting it and you're saying, okay, well, instead of me being abused or hurt or emotionally traumatized, I'm going to go in and I'm going to change that memory. I'm going to go in like and say, well, instead of this happening, I'm going to go in and protect myself in the memory now. And that's really how you rewrite that. I should do that more often. I always forget about that. Ooh. Oh, hello. Okay, this one. Jesus, and that one. And that one. Okay. Put that away for a second. Okay, so now instead of upside down, we have the Queen of Swords in a challenge position. In the music deck, it's give me some truth. And I always see it as like lightning, as like lightning strikes. It's um, it's like illumination. It's like a sudden um, epiphany uh, brainstorm. So you're starting to learn your inner truth as you transform. Another challenge the mother of cups. Okay. So we're having this push and pull between thoughts and emotions and it's trying to balance. And so we have, um, it's like bubbles, um, like bubbles that need to be popped. Like if you got like a bubble in your joint, you got to pop it. It's like in your, all these little specks, and you gotta snap them. Um, and it, it's like uh, leftover feelings that you have to clean out of your muscle tissue. And, and instead of all these little, um, like each one of these, these little lights here is like this whole card of uh, conflict, 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 conflict. Now here we have two people in the dark and this is conflict resolution. Um, and is to say that the way to get out of this 
thought trap of all these to walk away from it is to resolve each of these. Now it might look like these are lighting up, but it's it's uh, it's not coherent. It's like it's not coherent light. You have to be sharp like lightning, like a laser beam um, with what you're doing to clear it out. Um, and in the way that the light comes, like the moonlight here is through transforming it so that the light radiates out of your own head, kind of. Mm. Oh my God. Time. 13 minutes. Uh -huh. Speaking of transformation, I'm getting water. Okay, so, um, okay, so here's the, the Son of Cups. This is the Knight of Cups inverted. Now, uh, I always see it as he's got all his chakras kind of jammed into here, but what it actually looks like is collecting all of this crap. And now the queen can be a one or a 13. So again, we have like this idea of transforming different aspects of ourselves. Death to the old way of thinking, death to all these engrams. Um, now, even though the sun is, you'd think, usually less than the queen, what we've gone from is this 13 to a 12. So again, we're in this hanged man energy of this bat, and we're actually saying, okay, I'm, I'm counting down to this 10, 13, 12, and then we go 11, 10, and when we hit the 10, it's, it's like a wall of 10s. It's the, the new beginning. It's that rebirth. But what's, what's happening here is that all of these little specks of crap that are flaring up inside the emotional body of you have been collected into this cup that's down here. And especially when knights come out inverted, because they can be a 1 or a 12 for me, they're definitely a 12 when they're inverted. Definitely the hanged man. So we've collected all this stuff, and here the muscle fibers are going in a more functional direction. They're not all akimbo. We can see the definition. Um, and even here, the beak is orange in this root uh, fire energy. And here it's black because we've gone through the darkness. We're not, we're not dealing with this, um, with this conflict energy. We've resolved it down to like a um, absolute zero kind of a thing. And all that crap is collected in this cup now. And we're going to stay here for a minute until we can start to see in the darkness. Is that even holding that up right? I can't tell. Mm. Aha! The Two of Swords. Okay, this is perfect. This also looks like angel wings too, but um, the Two of Swords is like the the lesser uh, ratchet level of the High Priestess. Now, it's about as close to a unicorn as you're gonna get. Look how similar this is, okay? So, here it's like an eclipse, because it's all black with this ring around it, and here is another eclipse. So we're coming in, this is sort of like a, a view of you backing away from this light that you've created almost. It's, it's like, um, when you give up one mindset to take on a new one, you will transform here. And here we have this eclipse. Now this would technically look like a new moon. 
but it's it, it's happening on the full moon though in it's it's like um it's like a black hole when we see the full moon it's like the other side where all the light has gotten sucked in and what we're seeing on the outside is this blackness and then we have the event horizon where all the accretion disk and whatnot um it's like a wormhole um so what i i know that sounds confusing but what i'm saying is that this picture is this transformation it's um when you're in the dark and you've started to illuminate and uh, i mean it's like being on the other side of it because normally you'd say okay this is the white circle in the darkness of that side of the yin yang but here it's you know this dark circle but see we're in the darkness so we're just sort of illuminating and it, it's like saying that um the light we create comes from a kernel of darkness deep within ourselves. Um, I don't know if I can explain it. It's like, um, it's like a fractal. Okay. So, um, this is all the energy that we've worked through. We've blasted it. It's just kind of raggedy around the edge of this darkness and so we're we've got this darkness around we're changing our perspective we're picking it we're going from one sword to the other we're opening up this intuition now and we're illuminating the darkness from within but then inside that light there's like another darkness with another layer of light around it so it gets it goes on and on forever and we start to see that as we go through this portal when we open up this third eye that there's more layers available to us it's like when we do a five and then we go to another rung and then we do a five you know and then go to another rung this is telling you that there's more rungs out there um, and hopefully that made sense but anyway two of swords is like a low vibe high priestess and is telling you that this is the direction that you're heading in um, on the bottom of the deck okay so you have the three of swords inverted so this is the end of all that heartache and heartbreak and all of that all that stuff that you built your foundation on that you just I don't like this like I'm gonna make my house out of knowing what I don't like and I'm gonna stay in it and just get stuck in it forever and ever this is like unbinding so you go you go from two to three it's like you're you're working your way back up because the this one is holding one and then we go two and then here's the three now but this this plan is saying now my plan is to undo all of this trauma and that's what all this shadow work is about. And you gotta go deep, that's why it's all juicy. Alright, so let me get into this work your light deck again. Now what else? I feel like we're almost done here. Come on, Raphael, what's up? What's up, my home slice? Not that whole stack. Okay, I guess the whole stack. All right. I don't think I need that card. I mean, something else on the bottom. Okay, so we're not using any of this anymore. Getting rid of that. Not looking at the bottom. Okay. So, <sighs> deep replenishment, retreat, rest, and be held. Now, you ever see that corny thing that says deep rest equals depressed? That when, if you're feeling depressed, that you, you haven't slowed down enough? 
you're you just need to sleep it off kind of and it's like here's this moon here here's this person who stopped to smell the roses it, it's like um you're doing all this work but you also can't force it you have to slow it down you have to take the time to consider each one of these emotional uh, kernels these emotional cysts and and really work out why it's there uh, you know, like Rome wasn't built in a day but I mean there's only a couple of days left until this full moon here but just just consider that doing all this stuff you still need to take care of your your body and mind and soul because the the point of healing is is to heal and you need rest to do that as well so here share your voice come out of the cave persecution expression okay so this This is kind of like this. It's, um, especially with the pyramid and this Egyptian lady. Oh no, what are you saying about this card? You're learning to think and communicate in a new way. And this is what you need to share, is that you've found this illumination in the dark. Now, Trust Your Path goes back to that Council of Light card that popped out. If you knew you would be supported, what would you do? And again, we have this idea of going through a portal, a sort of traveling situation of, of really going the distance. So this is, <laughs> it's like, um, go the distance, um, you know, like if you build it, they will come. Oh, here we go. Where's that? Yeah. Where's that card? Uh, I don't know which one. If you build it, they will come. And then this one was go the distance. Um, and then, then here it's saying, cracked open it's happening for you not to you and this is where the hell did that lady go that was oh here yeah so here she's she, here we have all this this tr path that you've traveled for a long time and we're looking deep into one of these emotional cysts and we see hey there's a lady there that caused me to you know develop this tick that makes me lash out at people what do I need to do to heal her I need to talk to her in my revisioning of the the situation so that I can cleanse that memory out of my DNA structure um, and then even here it says persecution it's like if you 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 feel like oh why why me what this isn't fair why do I always have to do this everyone hates me this hurts I don't want to be in the dark I feel like I'm being punished Okay, that's, this is exactly what's needing to be healed. It's like you're not going through this to torture yourself. You're going through it to heal yourself, to achieve this transformation. And here we say, leap, you go first, the universe will catch you. So it's like you're not, and here's the full moon, especially in this idea of the fool, because the fool is the guy leaping off of the, the thing. We're going, we're, we're not leaping off a cliff this time. We're leaping through this like womb hole. Um, and it, it's, uh, it's, it takes courage to go where, through this portal, to say, I'm ready to give up this thought process that I had in order to gain this new one. I'm going to release myself from all this prison that I've built up around myself. And you have to really take that leap to get the transformation. So, um, I 
think. I just want to see what's on the back of this deck. Yeah. It's like burnout. There, oh, what's the, there's a card in here that I want. I want it. I want it to want it. To it. It's probably gonna be way the hell back here. Ooh. Hang on, what's this one? Oh, now I forgot what card I was looking for. Where is it? I think it was this one. Yeah, I don't know. I forgot. I think I was looking for this one. This is the magician usually in this card, but here it's called Indigo. And, you know, it has to do with the Indigo children of being in this, like, crystallized attunement energy, blah, blah, blah. But also the color Indigo has to do with, um, the third eye, um, and then we see one zero, we have this 10 energy again. Um, this, yeah, this coming in upside down is like this idea of it's better to burn out than to fade away. But the problem is if you burn out, you're never gonna do that shadow work. There we go, shadow work. These get so anticlimactic at the end. Um, anyway, I'm going to change my information soon. I'm going to open readings back up, but I really would be interested in people purchasing art as well. I've got some... Uh, I've got a couple of items on makeplayingcards.com, and I haven't been able to find a way to get to like a store, like a shop website for that yeah I don't I haven't used that website much I'm not really sure how it works but um, if you go to one of these places you'll find links for it um, their cards are really expensive one off because I put them in custom boxes and it like doubled the price but uh, you know whatever um, I might try to offer them shrink wrap but I don't I'm not really feeling that but you can get merch, you can get readings, even though it says don't buy them, you can get them again. Um, what else am I doing? Yeah, I'm doing those portraits. I'm going to change the price off of the sale price. So they're 20 bucks for the next couple of days. Um, and then there'll be 40 after. Um, you can get prints on DeviantArt, you can get merch on Cafe Press, you can get that stuff. Um, the designs I have on makeplayingcards.com is one's called Eye Lotus and the other one's called Peppermint Swirl. I uh, also have Peppermint Swirl on DeviantArt and on Cafe Press so if I don't know if you'll get it by Christmas but you can certainly get holiday stuff in that design. Uh, I think that's it. I'm sounding tired and groggy because it's 2.30 in the morning. So that was um, a reading really based around the 12-12 and then heading into 2020 uh, from Archangel Raphael, the healer, the weaver, the sewer. Actually, someone else is the weaver, but he's, he's doing sewing, he's doing repairing, he's doing patchwork, he's doing upgrades, he's doing life support. Um... And he's just generally chilling. Um, yeah, alright. I guess that's it. Peace out, y'all.